Hello and welcome to the City of London. Today we're going to be looking at the city's connection with tea and we will be making occasional references to coffee as well. We're in St Michael's Alley just off Cornhill and we're at the site of the Jamaica Wine House and it was here in 1652 that London's first coffee house stood. Also I've dropped in an 18th century map of the coffee and tea houses around Cornhill and Lombard Street. I will look at the function they served, which was a lot more than just serving tea or coffee. But I can promise you it was all proper and legal stuff. Nothing improper was going on here, of course. And by the early 18th century, it was reckoned that London had more coffee houses than any other city in the world except for Constantinople. And now we're turning to the subject of tea. Tea was popularised reputedly by Catherine of Braganza, the daughter of King John IV of Portugal, who married Charles II in 1662. We're walking on Birchin Lane for a moment. It's a lane that connects many thoroughfares through the city of London, and we're in the mid-afternoon lull. This has been a regular feature since Covid. If you were to go back to the 1980s and 1990s, you'd have seen this lane busy at any time of day, with messages buzzing around between city offices. And now with the magic of technology and innovation, the atmosphere of the street has changed considerably. And now we're accessing what I call the secret city of London. I just love these courts. We've seen Cowper's Court and we're now going through Bengal Court. This is really the magic of the city of London. On the corner is the famous George and Vulture restaurant formerly one of London's most famous coffee and chop houses. The Georgian Vulture has been headquarters of the city Pickwick Club since its foundation, and many relatives of Charles Dickens have wined and dined here. And I believe it has connections with other Charles Dickens societies. Just look at this magnificent brickwork. This brickwork could really tell a few stories about the city of London. You can just wonder what dark and devilish deeds took place here. A few months ago we did a walk up the Strand and Fleet Street and we ended up at Twining's Tea Shop in the Strand. I'll drop a link to that video in the description. Here we see the founder of the Twining Tea Empire. In 1784 Richard Twining persuaded William Pitt the Younger to reduce the tax on tea from an amazing 119% to 12.5% through the operation of the Computation Act. As a result, tea sales took off. And now we're in Change Alley, formerly known as Exchange Alley. This became an early venue for the lively trading of shares and commodities through the coffee houses of Jonathan's and Garraway's. Lombard Street and Change Alley been the open air meeting place of London's mercantile community before Thomas Gresham founded the Royal Exchange in 1565. Many stock jobbers who had been expelled from the Royal Exchange for their rude manners migrated to Jonathan's and Garraway's. Today we see the City of London as one of the great financial centres of the world, it's not the greatest financial centre, and it's amazing to think that one of its starts was here. And now we've come on to Lombard Street, which was the home of Jardine Matheson, whose ship Sarah carried the first cargo after the ending of the East India Company's monopoly on tea trading. And we'll mention the East India Company shortly. Again, we've touched upon the role of the East India Company before, but the company had such a, a strong influence on the development of the city of London, for good or for bad. And now we can see the picture of East India House. 
as it once stood in Lednor Street. The East India Company prohibited all other countries from importing any products into England, especially tea, creating a monopoly of tea into Britain. Presumably there was strong political support for the actions of this company. And you can only wonder if many politicians were benefiting from the actions of the East India Company. I guess many of the politicians then were about as corrupt as they are now. I was a big fan of the TV series Taboo and I've dropped in a couple of pictures here, one of Jonathan Price and one of Tom Hardy, both magnificent actors. I really enjoyed the series, but though the story is not based on fact, how far from the truth were the actions of the East India Company? But well, let's face it, we're involved in some very underhand tactics. Now we can see that new offices of Plantation House at 30 Frenchard Street. This is an, another organisation, according to the famous writer Ian Sinclair, that may have a less than perfect history. One, shall we say, that is based on exploitation and slavery. And now we're in Mincing Lane, just off Fenchurch Street. This was known back in the day as the Street of Tea. Now it's where Plantation House used to be located. I've dropped in an old picture of Plantation House as it would have looked when located in Mincing Lane. I've dropped in a page showing the history of tea auctions in London that took place for 319 years from 1680 and they took place at Plantation House between 1936 up until 1970. Previously they'd operated for over 150 years from East India House and following the period at Plantation House they then took place at Sir John Lyon House up until 1990 and then for the final eight years in the London Chamber of Commerce. I've dropped in some views of Minster Court, though, to my knowledge, it doesn't have any history to do with the tea and coffee trade, but it makes for good viewing. We've now walked on to Great Tower Street and we're heading in the direction of Tower Hill. Now this street has a very strong connection with the history and trading of tea in the City of London. As does East Street, which is just behind us, which had five tea merchants, including the famous Thomas Ridgeway. I'm heading back to my office on Fenchurch Avenue and going through Mark Lane. Now we've done videos here before. Now this is famous for the trading of corn but has no connections with tea. But I thought I'd show it anyway.
We have now come to Fenchurch Street Station, and it was here in 1864 the aerated bread company, which had already revolutionised bread making, opened the first tea shop on the forecourt of the station. And we're not too far away from St. Catherine's Dock, again we've done a previous vlog, and that's the other side of Tower Hill. And if you go to Commodity Quay in St. Catherine's Dock, you'll see this plaque that was donated by James Finley, Finley was already an early pioneer in establishing the global tea trade. Now, an appropriate place to end this vlog is at the East India Arms. I'm not going in for a pint, but it's about a minute away from my office as well. But with the stories we've told about the East India Company, it seems fitting to end here. So thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the vlog.